guys and welcome back to Couch Critics. Hi guys, today we're gonna review a new movie and we're reviewing Past Lives. Yes, Past <laughs> Lives, which has recently been nominated for the Oscars, but it, it didn't want any. Um, it's kind of disappointing. It was a really good movie, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so basically it's a movie about a uh, girl who was living in South Korea and when she was 12, her family decided to move to America and North America. So basically it was Canada. They moved to Toronto. To Toronto. And uh, she had a really, really close friend in North Korea. And then uh, 12 years later, he tries to find her again. And so they start, like they reconnect, they start speaking and video chatting together. And then they stop like talking together. And then 12 years, 12 years later, this friend comes back to visit in the United States. But, but by that time she was already married to an American guy. And the whole story is about their friendship and their reconnection. And yeah, what what did you think about um, them reconnecting? And like, because they reconnect twice and mm -hmm. they completely like there's every 12 years, there's a time where they just lose touch and mm -hmm. someone resurfaces into the other person's life. The first time it was a girl reaching out, although she did realize that the guy tried um talking like finding her but he couldn't because she changed her name from uh, um i don't know what her, her name, korean name her korean to name to Nora. Nora, yes mm -hmm. and then the second time it was the guy who tried reaching out and he reached out by just visiting telling her he wanted to come to new york city of you know for like uh for holidays but in fact it was to see her so mm -hmm. yeah what did you think about these reconnections these I think that the movie uh, is about the exploration of what if, of uh, of a great perhaps, of of a thrill that that yeah. haven't been uh, pursued. I also think the movie is about immigration. Yes, I think it's it's about existing somewhere but griefing somewhere er else, and what that entails. Um, yeah, I, I, going into this movie, I expected it to be, uh, I don't know, like maybe the, like after sun or like, this is how it was described to me, but I found the movie to be very slow. Uh, I do get the back and forth, uh, when it comes to their, their relationship and their friendship, but I feel like it was, um, it was missing more elements. Maybe I would have loved to see more of like the love between her and her husband, Archer. Because I felt like he was just a side character. And I do get that she keeps... I, I don't want to say that she keeps choosing him because she chooses her life in America after all. Uh, but I, I, I want to know... I want to see more of why she she decides to stay with him rather than than exploring what she could have uh, had with her love. But I think that this is what the movie is about mm -hmm. because every time I saw Nora and Arthur together, I just couldn't help but feel as if they didn't belong together. And there was the scene that really marked me, the scene where um, um, her Korean friend, Hey Song, that was his name, mm -hmm. right? Hey Song first visits their apartment in New York and Arthur was there. Yeah. And we see Arthur in one frame in like once on one side of the room and then there was Nora and Hey Song together. And Nora A and Hey Song they they seemed so well together. Yeah. Because yeah. of their ethnicity, because of their similarities, because of everything they had in common. And it's just a lot of times it didn't make sense that Nora was with Arthur. But I think that this is the beauty of the movie. And I also love that even though it didn't make sense that they would be together, she still chose Arthur. Mm -hmm. And I also, the, in the movie, there's no antagonist. There's no protagonist. It's just basically a movie about life. It's about a situation. There's nothing any one of all three of them could have done to change the situation. You know, Nora had immigrated. She met someone else. And there's... It's not her fault that she fell in love with Arthur. It's not her fault that she decided yeah. to continue her life. It's not Hei Song's fault that he didn't immigrate. It's just life as it is. And just 
accepting our like our situation but still making the most of it Mm -hmm. and yeah i yeah there's something that really marked me about the movie is that even though we can clearly see the connection and the love nora and hey song had for each other there was no adultery there was nothing like out Mm -hmm. of the line Everybody was still very respectful. Everybody was faithful. And even the day that Nora and Haesung spent together, they the distance between them was very was there and it was it was annoying to see them like far away so not getting so closer. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> because I think as an audience, I was personally rooting for sure. them to be together. But Arthur was such a nice person that it was hard to mm want them to be to get like want Nora and Hayesung to be because you know that Arthur would have been hurt if they did end up together yeah I, I definitely agree with you I think the movie is, an, is a beautiful exploration of fate yeah. and uh, the extent of it and I also feel like uh, the the trust that Arthur put in Nora is a beautiful declaration of his love to her because he let her explore that whole side of her life uh, and and it was a huge risk for him because she could she could have just decided to leave and also there were so many scenes of her husband cons- consoling her and being there for her uh, at the expense of of his pain yeah uh, like uh, i'm thinking about the last scene of him just holding her uh, while she was crying about her her the old lover yeah. <laughs> that's that's how we can call him um uh, and also the scene where the, the three of them were at the restaurant and he was just like on this side while both of nora and hey hey song yeah. were speaking in korean that scene was heartbreaking even though nothing was happening just even again in the frames in the cinematography you would see nora and haesung together Mm -hmm. and then you see him he was always like on the sidelines he was also away he was always alone in the frames and there was at one point where nora turns and tells him we were talking about you you could see the pain in his eyes he was holding back tears yeah and the acting for that it wasn't too much but it was there and you could feel it and Mm -hmm. yeah it was an incredible and there were moments where he he showed some insecurity uh i'm thinking about this scene when he's when he's telling nora that he can't compete with this guy because just the description of their love story isn't as great as the description of Hayson and Nora's love story, two people who met when they were younger and like they meet again and they fall in love again. And, yes. Yeah. But I think that that's what makes their relationship stronger because mm. against all odds, even though they were very different, Arthur and Nora ended up together, which means something has to be there for them to be together. And I know Arthur unrum unromanticized it he turned yeah. it into something so unromantic he said <laughs> we met at this writer's retreat and then we moved in together to save on rent and then we got married for your green card and he made mm-hmm. it seem such like a relationship out of convenience but i still think that something was there for them to be together i i don't know nora seemed like a very honest person to me and i wanted to believe that she loved arthur it's very realistic because um I feel like in real life, those are the kind of things that could happen. Like people aren't, they don't follow a straight line. Like a normal human has doubts and they might question their decision and everything. And so I feel like it's, this movie, those characters are very human. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everyone could relate to them. I also like how the movie was uh, divided in three parts, uh, three goodbyes. And that was like the director tried to do that on purpose. The first goodbye was when, uh, Nora had to immigrate and she she had to say goodbye to his son as a kid then they had to say goodbye again as uh, young adults and then the the final goodbye when they're adults and yeah. each one of them goes their separate way do you think that Nora was in love with his son and do you think she as a kid as a 20 year old and as a 30 year old in each phase do you think like do you think she was in love with her I, I don't think she was in love with him. I think she was missing the person that she 
was when she was with him mm. because i feel like that's something that happens when you immigrate you kind of like create a new family and like you you lay those roots in a new place and you perfectly fit in a new place but you also f- fit elsewhere and, and you although you're you could be the happiest person with your life at a new place and and that new place could be ho- your new home and you could and you genuinely feel at home but you can't help but wonder what yeah. your other home and what would happen to your what happened to your other roots and how would they flower <laughs> yeah. i totally agree with that and i also think she was in love with the person she used to be because you know when you meet people at a young age and you don't see them again mm-hmm. seeing them again you would just remember this person you were as a kid and yeah. as kids i think we all have a lot of ambitions ambitions and motivations and we sometimes forget that as we grow older Mm. and I don't know I personally related a lot to Nora because seeing her as a kid having this idealistic lifestyle of winning prizes she wanted to win the Nobel Prize the Tony so many things Mm. and then you see her get older and you know just I don't want to say accepting but like being following the norms of what yeah yeah, settling to Mm -hmm. what the norms are living a very typical new york new yorker life and having her apartment with her husband and everything it's just i think it's so different from what she would have probably expected of having at that age and yeah it's just i think that hey song reminded her of that but i don't think she would have had what she would have dreamed of had she stayed with hey song Mm -hmm. either and i don't think you can blame how you turn out to be on who you're with i think that's something you have to work on personally whether you're in a relationship or not but it's just these reminders and i also think that had she stayed with hey song she would have still grown out of that person at the mm-hmm. same time out of her kid self but at that time she wouldn't have somebody to remind her of that because since she changed with him yeah. looking at him wouldn't remind her of who she was as a kid so i feel like hey song was like her own personal time capsule that she would come back and visit and mm. become the person she was again. Yeah, it's it's a very simple movie and yet very complex in a way. Mm. This like the script was so, I want to say it was so like not filtered, but again simple, pure, very very clear and neat, and yet the meaning behind it. But don't you so think that it was a bit too neat? Not no? really. Okay. okay. Because here's my thought. I think the beauty about most movies is that, you know, when you have these monologues, when you have these extreme scenes where people get mad at each other or they cry or whatever, they say these things mm-hmm. that we don't say in real life. I feel like a lot of the times in real life, most things go unsaid. And this is why we like movies so much. It's because they say what we're afraid of saying. They're, they say what we don't know how to say. This movie didn't do that. This movie was... I think, in my opinion, exactly like real life. A lot Mm -hmm. of things went on set, but just looking at these moments of silence, just, I don't know. It also said a lot of things by not saying anything. (laughs) So, yeah, maybe things were missing, but for this movie, it's good that things Mm -hmm. were... We need to make movies where we just experience with new things. Yeah. I totally agree. Also, the acting was so great. It was so... They weren't doing too much. It was so natural. But it was brilliant at the same time. Completely believable. They truly looked like they cared for each other. And, yeah. <laughs> I also loved the scene where Hey Song spoke with Arthur at the restaurant after Nora went. And he told him, maybe that's one of our 8,000 lives brushing. Because yes, there's a relationship between Nora and Arthur. Yeah. And there's a relationship between Nora and Hyesung. But there's also a relationship between, between Hyesung and Arthur. Mm. And I love that they acknowledge that. And both of them clearly seem to have a lot of respect for each other because both of them love the same person in the most authentic way. And for Nora's sake, they didn't want to. Like, for Nora's sake, Hyesung didn't ask her to move Mm. back to Seoul with her. And Arthur didn't ask her to not see him. They both, And that's a sacrifice that they both made for Nora. And I just love that so much. (laughs) It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, 
This movie reminded me a lot of Everything Everywhere All at Once. They're completely different, but it's I feel like it's the same concept. Okay. Uh like for Everything Everywhere All at Once, it's it shows you what the character's life would have been like you truly see it visually uh if she chose different paths it also reminded me of the cartoon that we watched the studio ghibli uh, yeah um movie. Uh, the boy and the heron yeah 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 and it's this idea of like of like this it's actually a question of should you settle for what we have for what you have or should you pursue a great perhaps and i guess like we could sit here and debate all day and say that yeah no you should definitely be content but what you have but you 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 never know and that's the beauty of it and this is why these movies exist and i I feel like there should be other movies where protagonists go a different way without without the movie being so cheesy at the Mm -hmm. end but yeah um this whole idea of exploration is very interesting and i love how we see more and more movies like this for everything everywhere all at once it was more career focused at certain points than relationships and this movie it's more about what could have happened if the protagonist chose another relationship or maybe if she stayed in another country and yeah it's it's life as yeah, you said earlier. Really. Like, and I think that even if you choose to settle in this case in between mm-hmm. brackets, I think there's a lot of exploration you could do in that area as well of staying with the Yeah, in, of course. Yeah. Because both of them have the same ambitions and both of them are writers and both of them are very supportive of each other's careers. So I think there's also a beauty there. And yeah, maybe it's a slower life, maybe it's less painful, maybe it's less dramatic, but I don't want to judge, but it did in this situation seem like a wise, very selfless choice for them, for Nora to stay with Arthur. But also maybe selfish because she did choose New York over mm. Seoul at the same time. I don't know. Again, we could talk about this all day. Yeah, no, yeah. but in this case, I totally agree with you. I do think that Archer is a better fit for her because I feel like as grown-ups, she doesn't really know who Hayson is. Yeah. Uh, she has this idea of her, and he has this idea of her, and it doesn't mean that they're a perfect match, whereas what she has now with uh, Archer is something that's very precious. He did so many beautiful things for her, just from what we saw in the small yeah. clips in the, of the movie. And I, 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 I think it would be a shame to like let go of someone who's very yeah. caring and who she seems like she has feelings for too yeah. like she's not staying there because she has to yeah going back to them being in love uh nora and arthur there's a scene where he's she told him i mm-hmm. love you and he told her i'm not sure i believe that and that really marked me because as an audience mm-hmm. i wasn't sure i believed that either but i feel like it made a lot of things. I think this movie shows that love doesn't always have to be passionate and doesn't always have... Yes, it's... I don't know. I think we're so used to seeing a love that burns and a love that's yeah. you know bad and that ends with people dying for each other like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> it's nice to, for a change, see just a love that's peaceful, that's mm. trusting, and that's just... I don't want to say convenient, but that just makes sense and that's respectful. And it's it's a good change than seeing these, I don't know, people going out of their way. No. It's a good thing to normalize, yeah. actually. And I feel like to yeah. normalize something, we, we have to see it. And I'm happy that, that this movie is portraying such a safe relationship. Safe, and yes. And pure. Yeah. And where, where both sides could explore while respecting each other's limits and while staying faithful. And yeah, um, I love that. (laughs) Something else that I really loved was the fact that uh, the Korean characters were speaking Korean to each other. Yes. Yeah, and most of the movie actually was in Korean, and I loved that. I didn't even know it. Like I noticed it, but it didn't... It just was so smooth and natural. Mm-hmm. It didn't bother to... Re- I wasn't bothered to be reading subtitles and all Same. of that. Yeah. yeah. I also love the fact that when they immigrated, Nora's family, 
they they had a good life in mm. Seoul, Korea. Because sometimes I feel like when people show immigration, they show it like you're leaving something so bad for something so good, the American dream. And I honestly didn't see the difference between yeah. their life before and after. Of course, sometimes depending on what you're looking for, you might have more opportunities leaving from a place to another. Again, according to what it is that you want to do. But in that in that movie, it just it seemed like a very big sacrifice moving mm-hmm. out of Seoul for Nora's family because her parents were artists and writers and they had a fairly good life. And f- from my yeah. personal experience, I think when you immigrate to a different country, and I'm not saying that's the case for everybody, but most of the times when people immigrate, it's harder to find a, a life in being an artist in the new country because they're building everything back up from scratch it's not always the most convenient and sometimes you have to go into more mm-hmm. conventional jobs to build your life back up but that's my opinion it really depends on mm-hmm. everybody's experience and but they did mention that sacrifice in the movie because i don't think nora's parents kept being artists and writers in north america so yeah but they did it for their kids which is so beautiful yeah Mm-hmm. When people asked Nora, why, why are you leaving Seoul? She said, because Koreans don't win. Um, I don't know what award she was striving for. But um, as an American, she could have more chances. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. <laughs> Which is no longer the case now. <laughs> yeah. By the way, ethnic minorities <laughs> are being more represented. And we love that. But um, back in 2012, that was the case. And... I heard that a lot, telling people I wanted to be an actress growing up in Lebanon. They told me, but Lebanese people don't go to Hollywood. Like, it just didn't make sense back in the days. Mm-hmm. Now we see that. So it's good. It's good. People, yeah. Things are progressing and people's minds are changing. Yeah. And that's a good sign. That's but we do sign. need more representation, though. Yes. There is still a lot of work that should be done. And I feel like we're on a good path right now. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you want to add anything else? I think that sums it up. Same. All right. That was our review of Past Lives. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think of the movie and let us know if you think it was it deserved an Oscar or not. Yeah. Yeah. And please like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>